Well, over the past few days, there has been a lot of renewed talk of a nationwide red flag law following the two massacres in El Paso and Dayton. So what do those laws actually do? And what are the chances this type of gun control passes anytime soon? General 2's Michael Wooten digs into the issue for us tonight. In a country where the Constitution protects the right to bear arms, states continue to look at ways to restrict access to some, at least temporarily. Some call the laws extreme risk protection orders. Others call them red flag laws. What they do in general terms is relatively simple. Police or family members can ask a judge to order a temporary removal of weapons from those who present a danger to themselves or others. 17 states, including New York plus D.C., have passed some form of red flag legislation. Four more states have red flag laws under consideration. The laws are not identical. Many differ considerably. The president, as he repeated yesterday, has shown some support for the idea nationally. But the law does not come without critics. The pro-gun rights group 2A Western New York says the state's red flag law is unconstitutional, and so would the, quote, misguided federal gun confiscation powers being called for by President Donald Trump. Even the ACLU has some concerns, suggesting any law must have clear non-discriminatory criteria for defining persons as dangerous. The worry is red flag laws will be used to arbitrarily take away a constitutional right. Supporters say the laws could prevent the next mass shooting. And while that's not clear, studies like this one suggest the laws do have an impact on the most common form of gun violence in the country by decreasing a state's rate of suicide by as much as 7 to 14 percent. New York's red flag law will take effect later this month. I'm Michael Wooten, Channel 2 News.